This is 12-year-old Khalil. He's in hospital after, exhausted from hunger, he fell as he fled his home in Sudan's South Kordofan with his mother and two other siblings. He will be dead in two days. Amid Sudan's civil war, more than half the 50 million population are suffering from extreme hunger. Hundreds are estimated to be dying each day. But life-saving international aid is unable to reach millions of people who desperately need it. Khalil's mother, Rhoda Tia, describes how they had been surviving. He was eating tree leaves. There isn't any food that is suitable for human consumption. You can only eat things that aren't good for you. The only thing we can do is cut the tree leaves and boil them in hot water so he can digest them. We couldn't eat like normal people. Leaves have also become a staple for thousands at this sprawling displacement camp, also in South Kordofan. Rose Flegg and other emaciated women walk two hours each day to collect them from a forest. The mother of nine says that since she arrived here at the start of the year, UN aid food has made it through only once, back in May. Her family's share lasted just 10 days. I'm scared of being here because I don't know if I will live or I will die. I only surrender to God. I might die like those who died on the road. Sudan is a stark example of what happens when the final stage in an elaborate global system to tackle hunger, the delivery of food, breaks down. And it exposes a shaky premise on which this system rests, that governments will welcome help. UN relief agencies won't dispense aid in places without the approval of Sudan's government, which is backed by the military. But minutes from internal meetings show that UN and NGO logistics coordinators have reported for four months in a row, from May to August, that Sudanese authorities are refusing to issue travel permits for aid convoys to places in South Kordofan and Darfur. Reuters reporting has shown the army's main foe, the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, is also using food as a weapon. It has looted aid hubs and blocked relief agencies from accessing areas at risk of famine, including displaced persons camps in Darfur and areas of South Kordofan. The RSF has also conducted an ethnic cleansing campaign against the Masalit people in Darfur, driving hundreds of thousands from their homes and creating the conditions for famine. Neither the Sudanese government nor the RSF responded to questions for this report. So um, it's a little difficult to tease that out in terms of uh, how much of it is just insecurity, ongoing fighting, and how much of it is, um, you know, the authorities on either side saying, no, you can't go. There is certainly a combination of both. Dr. Rick Brennan is the Regional Emergency Director for the World Health Organization's Regional Office for the Eastern Mediterranean. It's those states, the Kordofans, Darfur, that have less access uh, to, to aid, have the highest levels of food insecurity and associated acute malnutrition. Around 15% of children are acutely malnourished. Over 30% are chronically malnourished. Um, uh, also, between 60 and 80 percent of hospitals in those hard-to-reach states are either non-functioning or only partially functioning. Back at the hospital, it is two days later. Khalil has just died. His mother says she wishes they had never left their home and that she and her children could have perished together. <laughs> Khalil had needed an operation for a ruptured intestine. Doctors said that, in his malnourished state, he was then too weak to fight off an infection. His mother had fled to save her children from starvation. But in Sudan, amid the world's largest displacement crisis, blocked aid and violence that shows no sign of abating, for many, there is no escape.